Good morning, welcome to our YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about five tips that you need to know when you start flipping furniture on how to find your pieces, what to look for, and how to maximize your time and your profits while buying. And then I'm going to be sharing with you 10 tools that you'll need. They're simple tools, you may already have some, but I'll share with you where you can find them, how much it'll cost you, and everything you need to know to start flipping furniture. So whether you already have a piece or you're looking to start flipping on the side to make profit, this video will be a help to you. Let's get started. Tip number one, start small. Don't start with that big old table in your dining room that has six chairs. I did that. My first project was a table and chairs and it was almost my last project. Go ahead and start with that ugly little nightstand you shoved in your kid's room or in your guest bedroom and doll it up first. Or go look for a dresser or a desk, something a little smaller to start with. Tip number two, when you're buying off marketplace, ask questions. Don't waste your time driving out 20 minutes to go pick up something and then find out it's nowhere near what you wanted. Ask questions like, are there chips and cracks in it? A little bit of dings we can fill in, but if there's a crack up the side, that's a problem. Do the drawers work? If the drawers are broken, they're a real struggle to fix, and sometimes you have to replace the whole piece of hardware that goes underneath it, and that is a pain. Is it from a smoke-free house? Now, I sometimes feel awkward asking this, but I'd rather ask it than get to the place and find the piece is hopelessly smoky smelled. Smoky smelled? Is that even a thing? It stinks like smoke and it's never gonna go away. The fourth question you can ask is, are you firm on the price? It doesn't hurt to ask and I've saved a lot of money just asking that question. People are often ready to give you a good deal. Number five, ask for the dimensions. If they're not listed, ask for them because I bought what I thought was a buffet, and I paid in advance, and my husband came home with a tiny, rickety, falling apart cupboard, and I was very, very sad. If you don't ask the questions, you're gonna show up, and you're gonna find your piece isn't exactly what you were expecting. This one's kinda missing a back. I can fix that later. Tip number three. You determine how much you make when you buy the piece. If you can only sell a dresser for $200 in your area, and each area is different, you're gonna to have to do your own research. But if you can only sell it for $200, and you pay 100 bucks for it, and you've put $50 in paint and new pretty handles on it, you're really limiting how much money you can make. You make your money when you buy smart. All right. Tip number four, check the bones. When you go to pick up a piece or you find one at a yard sale, give it a look over. Take your time, give it the wiggle test, does it wobble? Pull out the drawers if there are drawers. If they're missing pieces, maybe find a different piece. If you got trim falling off and doors falling off, it's gonna be a lot bigger project than you were hoping for. I know. And if the piece is a mess and it's falling apart, walk away. I don't care if you drove 20 minutes to get there, it's not worth taking home and spending hours trying to fix it. It's just not worth it. Walk away. So my fifth and final tip for you is to be patient, to check often, because new things are being listed on Marketplace and other places like OfferUp all the time. So check often, be patient, and wait for the right piece to come along. Don't get in the, I gotta paint something now mood. <laughs> Been there, done that. And buy something that really isn't right for you. Just be patient. And here's a bonus tip for you. Start painting neutrals. Probably don't start out painting teal and gold. They take a lot longer to sell, even though they're so pretty. All right, now we have those 10 tools that you need to get started. You can find pretty much all of them at Walmart or Home Depot, and I have the prices for you as well. 
First, you're gonna need a cleaner to get everything good and clean. Now this is crud cutter, it's what I like to use, but you can use pretty much any cleaner that is a degreaser, even something like a Dawn dish soap will work. This would run you about $6 at Walmart. Next, you're gonna need some sanding stuff. Now, I know chalk paint isn't the big deal is you're not supposed to sand. Well, if you want to sell a piece and you really want your piece to last, I think it's important to do the proper prep work. It really doesn't take that long, even if you don't have the fancy little tools. I'll show you how to do it by hand in under five minutes. Now, a package of these will run you about $6 at Home Depot. I would recommend probably a $150, $120, somewhere around there to do a good scuff over and get rid of any minor imperfections. And a $220 will really smooth everything out at the end. Next, I have wood filler. Now, not every piece needs wood filler, but I find that in old dressers, there's often a lot of dings, a lot of scratches, that a little bit of filling and smoothing out goes a long way to help the finish look just perfect. Now, this will run you about five to seven dollars, but it really lasts a very, very long time because you use so little of it. Next, we have our paintbrush. Now, I've had expensive paint brushes, I've had cheap paint brushes. This is actually the brush I reach for the most and it's just under six dollars. It's called the Wooster Shortcut and you can get it at Home Depot, you can get it on Amazon. I have links for most everything here on below. Alright, next we have chalk paint. I am, I'm going to be using Rust-Oleum today because it's just one of the easiest brands to find. You can get it at Walmart, you can get it at Home Depot, you can order it on Amazon. Again, links below. But um, It'll run you about $17 to $20 for this little guy, but he's going to do this project and probably at least one more. Now primer, I don't always use primer, but if you feel like your piece maybe is a little bit slicker or it's a little bit oily and you're afraid of things coming through your paint, it's a good idea to put a primer on it. A lot of people who paint furniture recommend this shellac based primer. It does a great job of blocking in any stains and oils and smells that may be inside the dresser. Next, we have our sealer. Now, mine's all gone, I gotta go buy some more. This is my favorite one to use. It's a water-based polycrylic. There are plenty of sealers out there, but you don't want to do all this work and then have somebody scratch your piece. This is just that added extra layer of protection to ensure that whether this is going in your home or you're selling it, it's gonna last for a long time. Now to apply it, my favorite thing is a foam brush. I forgot to say this is um, about $10 for half a pint, which is good for a project. This is a quart and it's probably more like 17 or 18. Um, to apply it, I like to use a foam brush. These are so cheap, they're pretty much disposable. You can get this for like 86 cents super important to have lint-free rags. Now this is an old t-shirt of my husband's and I'm gonna cut it up. But you can buy rags or shop towels for pretty cheap. I think shop towel roll is like $3 at Home Depot. But if you search around, old sheets work fine. Just cut up something that's not gonna leave lint behind. Last but not least, you need a little screwdriver. Okay, he doesn't have to be a little screwdriver. But little guy's helpful if it's a small drawer. But you're gonna wanna be able to remove all your hardware and put it back on in the end. And a screwdriver, you probably already have it. If you don't, you can find them at the dollar store. All right, you have your dresser, you have your tools. Now we're gonna paint this puppy and get her beautiful again. I'm gonna be using this Rust-Oleum chalk paint because again, you guys can find it anywhere and anybody can get their hands on it. So I'll be using this to turn this beast into a bell again. And I'm gonna be using a timer as I use each of these products to show you exactly how long it's gonna take you to clean a piece and how long it'll take you to get that sand done just so you know how much time you're gonna be investing in the piece, all right? Let's go. I'm just removing the rest of the drawer pulls before I start cleaning and sanding my piece. I'm going to be reusing them so I can save the money that I'd have to spend to replace them. They're all in good condition and they were all there.
Getting your piece good and clean is super important for the longevity of your paint. These pieces have probably been handled by sticky fingers and sweaty hands over the many years, so I like to give them a very thorough cleaning inside as well as out. I'm going to also pull out all the drawers and clean the insides of them as well just to make sure that there's no grime left over. This piece took 12 minutes to scrub out, so while I keep cleaning, why don't you head down to the comment section and let me know where you're at in your furniture flipping adventure. And any video or subjects that you would like us to cover on our channel. I've been painting furniture for four years now, but I'm just getting started into making videos. Our goal is to share two flips with you every week, so go ahead and subscribe if that's something you're interested in. I'll be down in the comment section answering as many questions as I can and getting to know y'all. So I know I said I'd show you how to sand by hand in under 5 minutes. But this eight drawer monster took me seven and a half minutes to sand. It had some extra hard stuff to get off the top and some extra grind that didn't come off when I scrubbed it. So I took my 150 grit sandpaper and just went over the whole piece. You don't have to go all the way down to the bare wood. That would take you a very long time and it's just not necessary. Just scuff up the finish enough to give the primer or your paint a little bit of extra to grab onto. I'm priming my piece today because I feel like she's a prime candidate for bleed through, which is when the oils from deep down in the wood seep up through your paint, causing stains from underneath. The primering process took me about 22 minutes. This light gray paint goes on really well after the primer. I will do two coats, but I did do a light sand with my 220 sand paper between the primer and the paint just to help smooth things out. Read the back of your paint can for recommended dry and recoat times. It's best to follow the instructions, although it's hard to wait for paint to dry. Most of the time you will need more than one coat. So focus on going over with nice, long, even strokes more than trying to get a perfect coverage on your first coat. Each of my coats of paint probably took me around 20 minutes a piece.
So I decided I didn't like the all gray look, so I'm adding a gel stain right over top of my paint. Then I'll wipe it back pretty quickly with a clean rag to show that gray tone from underneath for a faux finish. Gel stain doesn't penetrate the wood, but sits on top instead. My can cost around $18, but I already used it on a tabletop. And you can see at the beginning how very little I used. This giant can will last me so many projects, it's definitely worth the investment. Alright, I've got all my painting done. I've got the top how I like it. Now I'm going to give the body of the dresser a little bit of sanding to just distress it a little bit. Now how much you distress it is up to you, but how I like it is more of a light distress just along the edges and corners where it would naturally wear the paint. So, so if you're not certain that you want to distress it, I would recommend you just start with one drawer and get that done and then stand back and take a look at it and decide. And if you decide you don't like it, just paint back over the drawer. All right, I got it lightly distressed around the edges and in the details just to bring them out and make this dresser a little more farmhouse chic. But it is a hot day here in Texas and I'm sweating, so I'm gonna try to get this coat of poly on quickly. I'm using the Minwax water-based poly acrylic and I'm using it in clear satin today. That'll give a very light sheen. If you like a more matte finish, they have matte as well as gloss and semi-gloss. So it's really up to you of how much shine you want your project to have. I'm also going to be using my little foam brush, handy dandy foam brush, and let's get started. Alright, I put two coats of polyacrylic top coat on the sides and the drawers and then three on the top because it'll have a lot more stuff put on it. Now, both of these things that we use, the chalk paint and the top coat, they take about 30 days to cure. So I generally give out a little card 
with all of the cleaning instructions and just telling whoever buys this how to care for it and how long before it's fully cured and can be handled a little more roughly. And the last step to flipping your first piece of furniture is going to be staging it to sell. Now if you take a bad picture and you don't show off as much as you can, then odds are you're not going to get people to click on your ad and buy your picture. Don't put all the time in if you're not going to take time to take the extra steps to make it look beautiful like somebody would want it in their home. You can use decorations that you have around the house. I've gathered a little hoard of things that I've used over the last four years of flipping furniture. But if you're just starting, grab some of your own decor and just give it a little bit of staging and it'll go a long way. Clear off a wall in your house. I'm in my garage, but I've staged in my kitchen before, before I had a garage. So you can do it just about anywhere. Just try to find a clean background and take some good pictures. Not one, not three. Facebook, I think, allows 10. Take all of them open the drawers, take pictures, take pictures from the side, from different angles of the top. Give the people looking at your ad as much information as you can to help weed out any questions that they may have. Also include the dimensions in your listing with a thorough detail of all that you've done and why your piece is awesome. I have one more tip for you. If you're taking pictures on your phone and it has the square option, take your pictures with the square option because when you post on Marketplace and on OfferUp and things like that, they will only show a square of your picture. So if you frame the picture to be a rectangle and it only shows the square, it's going to be cutting out part of your photo. And if you don't have a square setting, just keep that in mind and take an extra step back so that your subject fits within the square that Facebook is going to show. The pictures are taken. I'm going to get them posted to Marketplace as soon as I get back inside and I'm probably going to list it for around $200. I haven't set a price firm yet in my head, but it's always better to start a little higher and you can come down lower. Don't expect to sell your piece on the first day and if you did, then you might have priced it a little too low. Everybody's market is different. I moved last year and I'm still trying to feel out what I can get for all the different pieces in my area. We were able to pick this dresser up for $20 off Facebook Marketplace. Now I don't always find dressers that cheap, but when I do I make sure I snap them up. The paint we used cost $20 for the quart, but we only used half of it so we can estimate about $10 for that. The primer and top coat we've used very little as well, so if I estimate high I can say we put $20 all into this dresser, which added with our $20 cost is only $40. Now that's pretty good. I don't usually get away with only spending $40 on a flip because I usually have to pay more to buy them in the first place. With that said, we are going to start listing it around $200 and we'll see if we get any bites on it. We'll be having more videos coming out on different flips that we do, some with painting, some not with painting and we'll be keeping you all updated on the profits that we make at the end of each video. Go ahead and comment below if you have any questions that I maybe didn't answer. I'd love to get down there and talk with some of you. Let me know what you think of the dresser. If the distressed isn't your style, don't worry, I have other things coming up. It's not really my style either, but it sells well in my area. Go ahead and like if you learned something and subscribe if you're interested in some more flipping tutorials and content. We'll see you next time. I'm Sarah. Bye.